Hey there everybody, Professor Cloud here with a first No Man's Sky how-to video. I have been playing No Man's Sky a ton over on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Professor Cloud, and there are certain things that are very, very helpful for finding cash, finding nanites, things along those lines, which are both extremely helpful for you to not just buy things, but also for you to help speed your gameplay along. This game can last forever. It's completely open-ended. So if you can speed things along by buying versus crafting, then why not do so? Uh, especially as you get later into the game. In addition, there are certain tasks out there that would be much better for new players to know about from the very beginning to help them get through some of that first 10 to 20 hour grind. One of those is scavenging ships. Everyone talks about the the power of scavenging ships, especially in early and mid-game. Uh, I am probably ensconced in the mid-game portion of the game. I've been playing for about 40 hours on this particular save. I have already scavenged, I'd say, probably five ships. Now, you're going to hear a lot of different things from a lot of different players as to how often they can get scavenged ships. Let me tell you from the very beginning, this is not a high percentage play, but it is a highly lucrative play. Everything is controlled off of the planetary charts, so what you're going to want to make sure to do is set yourself up for success when scavenging ships. That requires two main things. First, have enough planetary charts that you can actually find a ship. Now, I have a lot of navigation data, so I'm going to grab 10 of these. And we're going to go up to the space station and get the necessary charts from the cartographer in order to make this happen. The second thing, make sure that you have at least 6 to 12 slots open. And I highly recommend you have higher than 10 available slots open because the minute that you scavenge a ship it's going to return everything to your general inventory in your exosuit as items that you can sell or upgrade modules and you're going to get money from the resources scavenged from the ship and you're either going to get upgrade modules that you'll want to use or upgrade modules that you'll want to sell for nanites so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to head up to the space station. Now, I am making some assumptions that you are already far enough into the game that you can very quickly get back and forth from your base to your local space station. And the space station will put you right out in front of the cartographer. So we're going to go here to the cartographer. And we are going to get... We're going to exchange specific charts. And specifically, the planetary chart emergency cartographic data. Now, you might be going, well, I didn't really know that that's what it was going to help me. It will provide you with... And you can see it right in the very first line. Distress signals. That's what lets you know that there is an option for downed ships. So we'll go ahead and grab 10 of these. Okay. So you now see I have 10 emergency cartographic data. Now, here's the thing that unless you are a dedicated reader of the wiki... You might not know this. There are five different things that can be given as map points from these charts. The down ship is only one of those five. There is abandoned buildings, which you'll find some resources, you'll get maybe 150 to 200 nanites and that's about all they're not really worth it unless you're right at the very beginning of the game and you need every single thing that you can get 
there's a 40% chance that every distress signal will lead you to an abandoned building. Next is the distress beacon. The distress beacon is a downed ship. And that is going to be what you're going to want to scavenge. Third is a crashed ship. There's a difference. The crashed ship is one that has downed, but there is an NPC sitting at that ship that's going to ask you to perform a task, repair something on the ship, give them something, and then they will go off and leave, and they'll probably give you a reward in return of some kind. Fourth is the crashed freighter. Crashed freighter, you'll have, I believe it's six different cargo drops, and each one of those cargo drops will give you something, but you will have to repair the storage containers. Lastly is an observatory, and that's just a place with a, uh, a market person that you can buy things that you might not easily find from, but that's all that there's going to be there. Now I mentioned the abandoned building is a 40% chance. The distress beacon is a 15% chance. The crashed ship with an NPC is an 8% chance. The crashed freighter is an 8% chance, and the observatory is a 6% chance. So, 15% chance for a distress beacon. I've heard people say that it was as much as 50. Out and out lies. I'm you know, I'm getting this data right from the wiki, and that's what I'm turning and looking at as you're seeing me turn my head. The next thing. For these down ships that you're going to find, what types of ships are going to be very dependent on two things. The loot pool of the planet... But that loot pool of the planet is dependent on the economy of the system that you're in. So early in the game, you are you only have access to low-level economy systems. Therefore, you're only going to find C and B-level or B-class ships. As you get further in the game, you find richer systems. You'll be able to get access to the higher class ships. So, now, the next recommendation I make is to go ahead and run the planetary chart directly from the solar system, or from the space station. That way, it will find one on a planet in the system, doesn't necessarily have to focus on the planet that you're on. You'll notice I found an abandoned building. Let's go ahead and run another one. Because I ran an abandoned building, it tried to run another one. You can only have one of each type available to you at a time. So, in order for me... There we go. There's a distress signal. I'm now going to go to the distress signal and hopefully we're going to find what we're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and travel down to the planet where the distress signal is. I'll see you there. Okay, we've landed. Remember I said this is a distress signal? The distress, the distress signal is the relevant term that you will get from your planetary chart for the distress beacon and the crashed ship. You're not going to know whether or not there's an NPC here until you actually get here. There's an NPC here, which means I'm not going to be able to scavenge this ship. So, let's go ahead and clear this. Because I can't get another distress signal until I clear this one. So, I'm going to go through the process of clearing this guy. And then I'll get myself another distress signal. And we'll move on from there. Okay. So, we actually found ourselves a distress beacon. It took me... Three more attempts before I found one. I found an observatory, the abandoned building. And then I got two more that were duplicates. We now have ourselves a distress beacon. Or a down ship that has no NPCs around it. So we're good to go. Now, a lot of people ask the question... How am I going to, you know, get this ship 
off the ground. How am I going to scavenge it? Which can only be done at, in the space station. And then what's going to happen to my other ship? So let's talk about that. First of all, I'm clearing out the rest of my inventory. Let me do that real quickly. I am going to make an assumption that you are far enough into the game that you have been to the anomaly. And the, this will only work if you have made it to the anomaly. The way that this works is you're going to claim the ship and add it to your collection. Without a freighter, you're only allowed to have two ships in your collection at a time. However... There is only one place early in the game that you're allowed to change ships as your primary, and that's the anomaly. When you're on the anomaly, you can change which ship is your primary. So what we're going to do is we're going to claim the ship and add it to our collection. But then we're going to jump immediately back into our primary ship. We're going to fly up to the anomaly, switch back to the downed ship, go to the space station through the teleporter, and remember your ships will travel with you through the teleporter, and then at the space station we'll be able to go through the scavenge process. So, what we're going to do here is I'm going to go to the ship, open up the window, you can see everything's busted. Now, one thing to keep in mind if you do happen to see any uh, upgrade modules that you're going to want, you may want to go ahead and repair those, giving you a better chance of getting them back in the scavenge. You'll see this is a B-class ship, because I'm in a very low uh, economy system. And then all I have to do is claim it. And it's going to add this ship to my collection and make it my primary. So we go ahead and do that. But now, I'm going to run right back over to my primary and get in. And we're going to head to the anomaly. I don't have the anomaly currently in this system, so I have it on a shortcut. Oh, too far, not far enough away from the planet. There we go. Next step is we need to switch which ship is our primary. So we go to X, summon vehicles. And switch the dock ship. Let me go back through that again. So X, summon vehicles. By the way, I'm doing this on keyboard and mouse. But if you play on controller, you'll know what, exactly which key I'm referring to. To open up your in-game uh, menu. Go to Summon Vehicles, go to Switch Dock Ship, and then Summon the one that's downed. And then you can turn around immediately and see it there on the landing pad. Now all you need to do is, within the Anomaly, go to the Teleporter. 
And if you're not sure where that is, just follow along. Before you head into the room with all of the upgrades, just make an immediate left. Go straight up to the teleporter. And you can go to any space station that you have access to. I'm going to go to the one right here in the current system. Alright, now you're going to have to go to the... Uh, where the teleporter is, you're going to need to go to the other side of... the space station. Walk up to the Starship Outfitting section, terminal, and click on three. Now you'll notice 380,000 units is not a lot, but for those of you in early game, it might be quite a bit, and you may get more than that. In addition, hopefully, you will get some upgrades that you'll be able to either sell for nanites or improve your own current equipment. So let's go ahead and click Scrap. We need to validate it. And there we go. And you're seeing everything that I'm getting from this. But we go to my inventory now. These three items here, the springs, the coolant, and the thermal panels, will all be sellable. I then got three new B-Class modules, which may be of value to me, depending upon how you currently have your ship set up. But even if they're not of use now, they have a value. You can sell them to the Starship module upgrade vendor on the other side of... Actually, no, on this same side of the Starship, on the, of the Star Station base station, and get nanites, which are always valuable. And then lastly, we also got some chlorine. Chlorine has a value as well, 75,000 units. So this is what will you, you will do multiple times, excuse me, multiple times if you want to go through the scavenge process. Now, there are faster ways to get units. There are faster ways uh, and sometimes more lucrative ways to get to get nanites. Hopefully, I'll be able to produce some videos for some of those other possibilities. But this is the easiest way for you to go through the process of scavenging a ship, especially if you're in early and mid-game, certainly before you have to worry about freighters and, and hundreds of millions of units and things along those lines. So hopefully, this has been of value to you. And if you have been enjoying the content, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. Please make sure to hit the like button. And hopefully, I'll see you in a future video.